the legal talent on both sides is the best money can buy. I got to ask you about this. So, Elon, I don't know if you saw this. Two things. And I don't know who his lawyers are who are telling him he can do this. He's tweeting, obviously, last night. First, he's got a, a picture of a chessboard. Uh, and then he says, checkmate. And then he does a meme. This is him laughing. I wish we could get this up on the screen. We probably don't have it. Where he says, where it's, it's four pictures of him next to, they said I couldn't buy Twitter. Then they wouldn't disclose bot info. Now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court. Uh, now they have to disclose bot info in court. You suggest that this is all a leverage game and Musk has the leverage. What makes you so sure? In this video, as both Twitter stock and Tesla stock implode, the dumpster fire that is Twitter, the company, appears hell-bent on going out in a blaze of glory. And by blaze of glory, I mean whatever the opposite of a blaze of glory is. In today's video, in short, drama, drama, drama. So, let's get into it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive content and perks. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up-to-date 10-year Tesla stock price targets, and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon, and investment theme merch in the merch store. So check out the links in the pinned comment below, and thanks for your support. First up today, the drama that is the stock market continues today. Tesla stock getting absolutely hammered down over 6.5%, down about $50 per share. Yeah. And if anyone's wondering, I bought some Tesla stock at market open, about $756. Feel free to point and laugh. I'll be the one doing that in 10 years' time. Twitter stock today got absolutely murdered, down almost 11.5%, down $4.20. I mean, what are the odds? And if we rewind a little bit, Twitter returned since IPO about a decade ago, down over 20%. Clearly one of the greatest investments in the history of the stock market so far, right? 2013, yep, $41 per share. And as I record this, in 2022, it's $32 per share. Of course, maybe I'm being unfair. Maybe the whole stock market acted like that. What's Tesla done since around the same point in time? Slight difference, but hey, whatever. Fear and penny continues to ripple throughout the stock market today. The NASDAQ 100 down over 2%. Apple stock getting reamed down 1.5%. Alphabet stock, Google's parent company, down over 3%. Amazon down over 3%. The bell curve manifest. Nikola stock down over 6%. Rivian stock down over 6%. And ARK's flagship ETF, the ARK Innovation Fund, getting absolutely clobbered down nearly 7% today. I just want to return to Tesla stock over the last one year, up a whopping 2.5%. I've said it a million times, bears repeating. What the actual fuck? Won't age well. See you guys in a few years' time. And now, onto the drama you've all been waiting for. Elon Musk and Twitter, the sh is hitting the fan. Drama continuing now, just in, according to a new filing just released, Twitter's board has sent a new letter to Elon Musk's attorneys reiterating that it is confident and intends to close that deal at $54.20 a share. Joining us now, big technology founder Alex Kantrowitz. Uh, you've been with us every step of the way. So this letter, this new letter, which the filing just hit, Mr. Musk's and other Musk parties purported termination invalid and wrongful. That's according to Twitter's attorneys at Skadden Arps. The, the agreement is not terminated, is, is what they say. You suggest that this is all a leverage game and Musk has the leverage. What makes you so sure? Well, the company right now is dealing with an issue that Musk can wait them out. He has far more resources and he can make this case go year, two, maybe longer, depending on how uh, willing the Delaware courts are to, to hear his arguments. Uh, he can play with this you know, game and, and manipulate the way he wants. Whereas Twitter, you know, the, com the company is in limbo. How do you run a company like this? One to three years, you know, you don't even know exactly what's going on with your, your future. You can't roadmap, you can't do anything. I just want to quickly make an important point here. The idea that Twitter may not be able to do anything the next few years if this thing gets dragged through the legal system. While this is true, that would effectively be business as usual because Twitter has done literally fuck all for the last few years apart from accidentally deleting and deplatforming people whose ideas and opinions don't align with the one true narrative. Now don't get me wrong. Buried among the sea of useless wankers at Twitter, there are actually some valuable employees contributing to the company. But overall, if Twitter doesn't do anything for the next few years because there's some uncertainty, it'll be business as usual. Your employees are leaving. And so I think the longer that Musk waits, the more leverage he's going to have to get Twitter eventually go to his side and settle. I'm just wondering why you think he's going to be able to do all that and uh, effectively skirt the court of law in, in Delaware. This guy's an idiot. I mean, I just... Okay, what we've heard there, according to the anchor on CNBS, who 
for some reason, has an emotional response to Elon Musk. Always has. Don't know what the issue is there, but every time Elon and Tesla comes up, he's just slinging mud, spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and leveling ridiculous accusations. In essence, what we've just heard, the case is already done and dusted. Elon has to complete the deal. The only way he can avoid completing the deal is to break the law and skirt the legal system somehow. I'm not sure what the guest is going to have in response to this idiotic comment, but um, it's pretty clear to me at this point in time, here's how things play out. If this ends up in court, which I think is extremely unlikely, surely Twitter are not that stupid. If this ends up in court, Twitter has to substantiate their claims, their statements to the Securities and Exchange Commission that less than 5% of their daily active monetizable users are bots. The thing that they've been reporting quarter after quarter after quarter, they'll need to substantiate this because if they can't, Elon can walk from the deal because based on the publicly available information, if Elon's unable to substantiate this, every number in the entire deal changes, he can walk, no problems. It's as simple as that. Of course, if Twitter are extremely confident <laughs> that less than 5% of their daily monetizable active users are bots, then they'll be able to substantiate this claim in court. They'll also be able to show Elon Musk the technique they use to substantiate this to determine it's less than 5% and the deal can proceed. Based on the experience of practically every single user on the platform itself, far more than 5% of the users on the platform are bots. And if that's the case, then Twitter will expose themselves through this legal process for having lied repeatedly to the Securities and Exchange Commission. And then they're absolutely, and I mean absolutely f***. So the question is, does Twitter genuinely believe that less than 5% of users on their website are bots? And not only that, but do they genuinely believe that their process for determining that was accurate? That they can stand by those claims? If so, then yep, head to court. And if not, Twitter is likely to do anything they possibly can to avoid ending up in court. I think at this point in time, Twitter are just posturing. I don't personally believe that Twitter can substantiate their claims that less than 5% of the users on the website are bots. And if that's the case, there is zero chance they'll let this end up in court. Well, I guess it's slightly above zero. It is possible there's enough people at Twitter collectively suffering from brain damage, and we kind of already know that, but I'm not talking about the, uh, you know, the whole, there's no laptop. I'm talking about the people that are actually calling the shots as to whether or not this ends up in court. Elon has all the negotiating power, all the leverage in this deal. And I'll tell you one other thing. You do not want to be on the opposite side of a courtroom to Elon Musk and his legal team. Because, I, well, look, I think that if Twitter takes it all the way down the line, there's a chance that the court might rule in their favor. I accept that. But there's also a chance they might not. And then what happens if the Twitter board takes this all the way down the line, throws the company into chaos for three years, and then ultimately loses? You know, I think right now they're the only ones that want this deal to close. Musk doesn't want it to close. The employees don't want it to close. The board is the only one that wants it to close. Maybe some shareholders, right? And if they are to fail in this by taking it all the way down the line where they could potentially get a settlement beforehand, they're just as exposed to lawsuits as they would be by taking that settlement. So I think eventually they're going to crack. They're going to give in to Elon Musk. But again, look, anyone that's tried to predict this thing up until now has been wrong. They've also been right. If, the deal's not going to close. If, the if, deal's going to close. Right. So at this point, it's sort of a fool's errand to try to say exactly if 44 what's billion, happen. I'm sorry, if 44 billion isn't the right price, what is? I mean, look, I think if Elon ends up settling with Twitter and giving them a billion or two billion dollars, there's no telling how far this, st this stock is going to drop. Um, you'd imagine there would have to be like maybe a $3 billion settlement just so they could say the board can save face and go to shareholders and say, we got the best that we did. Um, but I think that it's a, it's an ugly situation. And I think holding Twitter stock right now isn't investing. It's gambling. You have no idea what's going to happen. Wait, is he still talking about Twitter stock or Rivian stock or Lucid stock or all of the above? Yeah, there's no predictability, no earnings. And the, the market can just tank this stock if it ends up going all the, you know, the entire distance so it's hard to say exactly what the price is, but it, it's low. And you don't think that there's a chance of anybody else coming in? No. I mean, if there was before, and there certainly isn't a chance that someone's going to come in now. Um, you, you look at this company, employee morale is down. Can they ship any features? I mean, the biggest thing they've shipped recently is a co-tweet, which is the most confusing social media feature I've ever seen. So you have all that. And then what are you going to do? You're going to try to pick this company off the ground at the lowest state it's ever been. Maybe you get a discount. But at the, in the moment we're in with the market tanking the way it is, um, it just doesn't seem to me to be a good buy. So you could go to private equity, but it's just not exactly an appealing target for anyone at this moment. This is a fair point. And truth be told, this wasn't a great target for Elon Musk either. But Elon's reason for offering to purchase 
is Twitter, wasn't to acquire the company from the investment point of view, but to do his absolute utmost to uphold the principles of free speech, you know, allowing the majority of humans on earth to freely express their thoughts, opinions, and ideas without fear of being shadow banned, deplatformed, cancelled, or fired from their job. If you remove Elon's focus on free speech, there's no one on the planet whose brain works who looks at this company and goes, oh yeah, geez, it's a great acquisition target. I'm happy to pay many tens of billions of dollars for this absolute dumpster fire of a company. And now, more drama. Okay, I've got a different one for you, and I think that you dealt with this a little bit inside the SEC when you were thinking about uh, the take private issue with Elon Musk a couple of years ago, which is the credibility of the courts and in, in, I think in certain cases the credibility of the SEC, which is to say if you were a judge who was inclined to say I'm going to force you, I, I'm going to say there's a specific performance requirement, you have to buy this company. There's a question mark about whether actually the Delaware court can actually even do that or not whether they can do it, but how and whether they can enforce it. And if they couldn't enforce it, meaning if Elon Musk were to snub his nose and say, OK, I'm not doing that. I know you say I'm supposed to do that, but I'm not going to do that. What they could actually do to enforce it and if they couldn't enforce it, what that would do to the entire political sort of uh, construct that is the Delaware court. Well, this is where I started, Andrew. And the Delaware courts are concerned not just about this case. And, and let's 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 note that there's a lot of emotion around this case. But they're very concerned about the longevity, predictability of Delaware as the venue to resolve judicial disputes. So you're right to focus on that. And as the facts play out, the Delaware courts are going to draw on their precedent and they're going to see, you know, let's go to the one end of the spectrum. Mr. Musk's claims have no merit. Um, they're, they're going to order a specific performance. And you're saying, well, what happens then? When you order specific performance, that's an order of the court. Courts have various powers to enforce their orders over time, whether um, it's contempt and the like. These things will play out. At the, you know, at the other end of the spectrum, if the claims have merit, we will see. One of the things that could happen here is that as the facts develop, right now a very wide bid-ask spread, and a spread that shows the dangers of merger arbitrage and the like, starts to narrow and the parties uh, reach a settlement. We, we will that see your, how this plays out. Is that your best guess of where this lands? I, I, you know, it's really, I hate to tell you this, Andrew, it's such wide, it's too early to tell because that factual record around Mr. Musk's claims um, people are looking at it. Um, what I would say is you're getting a wide variety of opinions across the, the spectrum. They seem to be tilting toward, you know, questionable merit. But we'll see as this develops. I got to ask you about this. So, Elon, I don't know if you saw this. Two things. And I don't know who his lawyers are. We're telling him that he can do this. Just want to jump in here quickly. Poor Andrew Sorkin here under the impression that Elon's lawyers are telling him or at least vetting his tweets. before. <laughs> Andrew. My friend, in the best case scenario, Elon's like, listen, lawyers, I want to tweet this. And they say, Elon, that's a bad idea. And Elon says, yeah, I know, but I'm still going to tweet it. Tweet. If he's even conversing with his lawyers, I doubt it. Some people just don't quite understand. The man gives literally zero fucks. He'll poke the bear. He'll troll. He'll speak his mind. Consequences be damned. Elon's no fool, however. Publicly mocking, ridiculing, and trolling Twitter will not impact the outcome of this case. It may impact people's opinions about Elon Musk, but nowhere in this transaction is there a clause. Elon Musk is not allowed to troll us via memes on Twitter. If he does, we can force him to proceed with the deal. It's not there. He's tweeting, obviously, last night. First, he's got a, a picture of a chessboard, uh, and then he says, checkmate. And then he does a meme. This is him laughing. I wish we could get this up on the screen. We probably don't have it. Where he says... Where it's, it's four pictures of him next to, they said I couldn't buy Twitter, then they wouldn't disclose bot info, now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court, uh, now they have to disclose bot info in court. Does a judge yeah, look, look at that and say, what does a judge look at that and say? Because effectively he's now saying, we, I want to I use the court for a discovery process. That's basically what, what this seems to be suggesting. And I think some judges may actually look askance at that. So let's have a closer look at these two tweets from Elon Musk here. The first great meme here. They said I couldn't buy Twitter. Then they wouldn't disclose bot info. Now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court. Now they have to disclose bot info in court. Hit the nail on the head, as I said earlier in this video. Unless Twitter are absolutely certain their claims, less than 5% of their users are bots, and they can substantiate these claims, they can prove how they got to this number. Unless they're absolutely confident of that, they're f If they end up in court, they're f If they don't end up in court, they're f for different reasons, because Twitter stock opposite of to the moon, in my opinion. And this great one as well. Chuck Norris here playing chess. Elon's comment following up. Chuck, mate. No further comment necessary. If it's judges are very good at discerning um, what people are using the powers of the court for. 
But you bring up one of the constituencies that we've talked about in the past, which is the regulators. And we, we're talking about a big bid-ask spread here. And the thirst of the market for additional new information that may indicate where this is headed. We have rules around communications with the market in times like this. And I think you're going to see some regulatory scrutiny here around that type of communication. Oh, God, this is getting absurd. Can you imagine the SEC scrutinizing this meme from Elon Musk? That's what we've just heard from the guest there, some regulatory scrutiny. I mean, he's literally talking about the suck Elon's... Wait, no, the Short Seller Enrichment Commission? What are they called? The SEC? I forget the acronym. Anyway, he's literally talking about the SEC here, reviewing Elon's memes, trolling Twitter. And again, this just goes back to the whole free speech thing. Speaking of the SEC, a couple of tweets here in response to Elon's meme. Twitter's claim of having greater than 95% real humans as daily active users certainly seems false. My notifications are filled with fake slash spam slash bot accounts promoting crypto. Oh, by the way, pro tip everyone, turn off your notifications on Twitter, at least for mentions. A lot of people seem to become addicted to their social media notifications. Stop wasting your goddamn fucking lives, people. If I'm curious who's been mentioning me in tweets, I can actually search for that, seek out the information I wish to find rather than just having it shoved down my throat. Anyway, Twitter needs to open source their data and be transparent with their users. Transparency increases trust. It certainly does. SEC should strictly look into this and investigate these claims made by Twitter. Elon Musk, hello, SEC. Some dickhead replying to this. Too busy enriching short sellers. Sorry, Elon. Of course, Elon definitely didn't see this tweet and didn't like it, so I don't know why I showed it. Now, some of you may be wondering, Stephen, aren't you being a little bit hard on the SEC? Aren't they doing their best there? And actually, yeah, if the goal of the SEC is to enrich short sellers and allow stock market manipulation 24-7, then yes, they're doing a sterling job. Brilliant, stunning. Best in the business, in fact. But I think the SEC's job is actually the literal opposite of helping to support those who are manipulating the market to make insane profits. I think their job is to actually prevent fraud and stock market manipulation rather than enabling it. And here's where the uh, rubber meets the road. For those of you who are unaware, I'm not going to say all, but certainly the majority of hedge funds just hedge funds, forget everyone else, just hedge funds alone, make the majority of their money, or at least a fair portion of it, manipulating the stock market, pushing hit pieces to media outlets, spreading sham research, fear, uncertainty and doubt, even buying and selling activity to cause a little bit of panic in the market to capitalize on this panic. And if any of you are curious about that, there's a great video on YouTube. Search for how hedge funds manipulate stocks, featuring Jim Cramer literally explaining how hedge funds manipulate stocks. Not that he would have ever have done that, and definitely not like he now has a charitable trust, which is effectively his way of still owning stocks, but not in a hedge fund because he can't, because he's talking about them on the television. He would definitely never manipulate stocks. That's why he's never on CNBS saying how Ford's going to beat Tesla with their electric vehicles, because Ford's not the largest position in his charitable trust. I got a bit sidetracked, didn't I? I think the point, the SEC is not credible. They are not competent, and they don't do their job, their literal mission. This is why both Elon and myself and many other informed investors have a complete and utter lack of respect, in fact, disdain for the SEC because they don't do what they say they're doing. They have a clear mission and instead of actively doing their best to prevent stock market manipulation, they enable it 24 seven. I know for some of you, this sounds conspiratorial. Come on, Steve, oh, mate, this is stock market manipulation. That doesn't happen. What are you, you're high or something, aren't you, man? High or not, my point still remains. The SEC does not do their job. They do not deserve respect. And they will continue to get trolled accordingly. Okay, final question, You need, to have, you need to have fair dissemination of information like this. Fair, okay, so who do you want to... Misleading. You're an independent operator at this point. Who would you prefer to be? Skadden is represent... Skadden Arps representing uh, Elon? Or do you prefer to be Wachtel representing Twitter? Uh, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to pick one over the other. I, I have uh, friends, uh, colleagues at the bar at both places. Um, what, I, what I will tell you is there's going to be no doubt with the players involved of, as I've seen them that this is going to be an incredibly well-briefed exercise. There, there, there is no doubt that, the, that the, what I will say is the legal talent on both sides is the best money can buy. So I think what he's trying to say there is sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, and enjoy the show. The best of the best will be battling it out. However, I personally believe that even the best lawyers on earth won't be able to save Twitter from their inevitable self-immolation. And on that note, if you own Twitter stock, <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. My mum taught me once, you know, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Of course, I don't always follow that advice. And as far as Tesla stock goes, the only thing I can say with any degree of confidence, it's pretty likely that Tesla stock is going to remain extremely volatile until there's some certainty and resolution with this Twitter deal. Let me know in the comments below, how do you guys and girls think this will play out? Ultimately, what happens in the end? Does Elon walk permanently, never acquire Twitter? Do they settle behind the scenes? 
Does he walk without penalty? Or does this deal get renegotiated at a significantly lower price? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And lastly, don't forget you can join Patreon with the card in the corner or the link at the pinned comment. You'll gain access to well over 100 exclusive Q&A videos, plus instant up-to-date access to my Tesla stock price targets out over the next decade in the bear case, the base case, the bull case, and the hyper bull case. So I'll see you over on Patreon. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos, there's a bunch of ways you can support the channel, access exclusive exclusive content and perks and get some free stocks and crypto. Check out the links in the pinned comment below. You can also pick up some Tesla, Elon and investment themed merch in the merch store. If you want to take it to the next level, join thousands of members on Patreon to gain exclusive access to over 100 Q&A videos, loads of exclusive content, exclusive access to my up to date 10 year Tesla stock price targets and even access my Tesla valuation model at the investor support level and above. So check out the links in the pinned comment below and thanks for your support. And if you're still watching, you're awesome. I read every single comment on this channel and I really appreciate your feedback. So if you've got any thoughts on today's video, questions, comments, or suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments below. Check the cards on screen now to browse the merch store, join Patreon, or watch the next video.